Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you behind the scenes and talk you through in regards to my editing process, my thoughts about an image, and my workflow. And this is episode 9 in this series, and thank you very much to everybody who has given me the support, the feedback, the comments on the previous 8 episodes. I'm looking forward to seeing how this series continues to grow. Now, for this week, for episode 9, it's the turn of a visit that I had to Kennard in Dingle. Now, Kennard is close to Dingle and I hadn't been there since last September, would you believe? It was when I had all the guys over visiting, which is unusual for me because normally I'm in Dingle every opportunity I can get. But nonetheless, there was a storm. Now, it was Storm Kathleen. So it's a number of weeks ago since this uh, episode or since this outing. But I didn't go during the storm. I went the day after the storm for two reasons. Number one, after a storm comes light and also waves. When in this particular occasion, the waves were quite large. There was an 8.2 meter swell on the day of the storm with Kathleen. Now, the following day, it was 4.1. So nothing to be sniffed at really but I decided to go to an area I hadn't brought you guys before on the vlog and it's a place that has a single solitary stack. Now it was a day when I was going to bring out the big guns. I was going to bring my 150 to 600 so my Sigma lens which comes with me on many occasions when I'm photographing waves but strangely enough when I arrived I noticed that there was big waves but there was no waves out by the stack but nonetheless I set off and decided to go down as low as I could possibly go to try and really extenuate the size of those waves and I managed to grab some absolutely incredible shots but in my edit I decided to go down a completely different route mainly because it was clear skies so it was very harsh light and I decided that I wanted to go all dark and moody and to really bring out the difference between the whites of the waves and the black of the stack and the cliffs as well and obviously the darkness of the water but I'll talk you through exactly my edit process now we're going to jump over onto Lightroom let's go Okay, so here we are now in Lightroom and this is the image that I've chosen and the reason I chose this image is because what I love about it is this one particular wave that's here and moreover I have a lot that's going on in regards to this here on the right hand side also. Now looking at this shot here I've taken it at 1 2500th of a second I was at f7.1 ISO was 100 and like I said I was using my Sigma 150 to 600 and I was at 600 mil so zoomed all the way in and as I mentioned I noticed that I had quite a lot of waves that were breaking between this stack here and me where I was positioned. I came down onto the beach and the reason I came onto the beach is to make sure that I could make this wave as big as possible in the frame. Now looking at the image here you can see by looking at the histogram there's quite a lot of space on the left hand side for my shadows and on the right hand side for my highlights but even with that I have to be conscious because if I'm making this anyway brighter here I risk these being overblown and if I look at this and show me what is overblown it's going to be quite a lot of areas where the water uh, is you can see it down here but still I still have quite a lot to be able to play around with so it's just on the fringes of that now I did this on purpose because I wanted to get a fast shutter speed to freeze all that water and I didn't want to risk having to have the image too dark so by having it this settings like I said the sky was clear and it was a bright day now also in the background here if you watch the video you'll see that this background is actually land mass in the background so by me shooting a 7.1 I don't get much bokeh but I get a good enough depth of field to be able to have this in focus and moreover this singular stack in focus as well and then with the background it just falls off and that's what I wanted to play with when I was doing this edit so the first thing that I want to do is look and say okay am I going to adjust my crop now my crop here is perfectly fine the way I've got this positioned it's nice to get this is on the right hand side on my thirds this is my main star of the show but I don't really like what's happening down here with these waves that have broken that are coming in so I'm going to crop that and I'm going to go into a 16.9 crop and even taking it by default for me it works 
perfectly fine. I've got enough space here for breathing room. I could come down, but then I don't want to have this wave in the front. So if I come to here, it's too much space up here and I think it's too tight. So where it exactly was, I think is exactly where I would have it. So that's my crop done first and foremost. The second thing that I want to do is I want to look and say, okay, like I want to do is I want to make this a dark and moody edit. So for me to be able to do that, I don't have much to do in reality. Um, but what I will do is utilize some masks as well when it comes to the end of my edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, okay, I want this to be probably uh, slightly different in its coloring. So I'm going to bring that to 5,000, I'd say. So probably, yeah, 5,400. And we'll see then how we're going to get on uh, with that. Now, and the next one from this is, I think there's too much color, even though there's not much color in the scene. Maybe I'll just bring this back over here slightly in rash that. Now, of that, I want to bring my exposure down. So I'm going to reduce that down, but not much. But if you notice what it does is, when I bring the exposure down, look at this wave. So if I bring that back to normal, now when I start bringing the exposure down, you start to see this wave becoming more prevalent in the scene. So I don't want to have a small bit of darkening and I can bring that up when I play with my shadows, which is going to be coming next. Now, I'm going to uh, add a bit of contrast. Normally, I like to go to the left hand side on contrast, but for this, it was a high contrast scene. And if I go to the left hand side here, it softens out that water, but I want it to be going on the right hand side. So I wanted to give it a good enough bit of contrast. And now you can see some of the texture starting to come out in that image. I'll just take off this actually so we can see what this is doing easier. Now, moreover, then I want to bring up my highlights. So looking at the histogram here, I have a lot that I can play with on the right hand side. And because I have now brought down my exposure, I'm losing the detail that I would have had in that stack. So two things I want to do is I want to give a small bit of an increase in my highlights, and then I'm going to go to my shadows. And if I go to my shadows and whack them all the way up here, you can see all the textures. If I zoom in here, you can see all of the textures here on this stack. And in fact, look, you can see some climbing ropes as well from people that have climbed up that stack in the past. But for me, I think I'm going to bring it up pretty high. I might adjust it in a moment, but I'm going to keep that pretty Pretty high, so I want that texture. Now on the whites, I have enough that I can play with again on the histogram, so I'm going to bring that over to there, I think. Yeah, that's going to work perfectly fine. And then I'm going to bring down my blacks. And by bringing down the blacks here, now if you notice what it's doing is it's bringing the darkness back into the stack, so it's effectively like adding some contrast back into the image texture I won't use, but clarity on this one I used it because I was playing around and said, okay, if I reduce the clarity, you see the water becomes kind of dreamlike. Now, if I bring the clarity all the way up, it goes too crunchy. And that also as well brings my whites and blows my whites. But I am going to add a bit of clarity, not a lot. I'm just going to bring probably there, I think actually yeah, works perfectly fine for me. And then the final thing I'm going to do is looking at this image here from an edit point of view anyway, is there's not much color in the scene. So I don't necessarily need any vibrance or any coloring. So I want to bring that down slightly just to be able to give it more of a mono look and feel overall on the image. So that was my main edits that I would have done. But what I decided then to do was say, okay, I want to get a bit more creative and I want to bring more attention to this wave. So if I go in here and use my masks and I use two masks on this. So if I use a radial and I'm going to effectively draw a radial gradient and bring it all the way across here. I'm going to bring that slightly up and now I'm going to have it that it's just covering all of the wave that's here. And now what I'm going to do on that is I want to increase the exposure ever so slightly. So if I bring the increase the exposure, you see that this wave now is becoming brighter. Now by doing that, what I can also then do in a moment is I can bring down the overall aspect of the image and make it darker. And then that wave is going to pop even more. I could look and say, okay, look at my whites specifically. But now if you look at my highlighting, I am slightly blown. So I want to just make sure that I'm managing that. So I want to bring that back ever so slightly here just so that that's not overly blown. And then the second mask that I'm going to do is one specifically for this wave. So I'm going to create um, another radial gradient. I'm going to make it quite small and I don't mind if it's overlapping because it's going to be on the same idea. So here again I want to bring up this ever so, so brightly and then take my whites as well. And then when I finally look at that, I come back into my exposure. And if I drop my exposure, the image now, if you look here, 
everything is getting dark except for that one wave. So that's where I think, you know, I kind of ended up because the image is quite dark and moody and foreboding, but I wanted to have the attention on this rock. I was hopeful that I would get some birds within the image, but on this occasion, there was no birds. But what I love about this image here, if we now look, you look at the texture and this wave that's breaking here, and then you can see pretty much into that wave. There is a bit of a bird visible, if we look at him in here, but he was moving. So again, you know, I'm not going to take him out because it's a lot of work to try and remove from that spray. But overall, I think from that image, I really like it. I'm going to bring it up slightly on the exposure because I just think it's a bit too dark. But now if I go into my uh, L to remove any of the clutter and then I press L again, that gives me an overview of the image and press L again, it comes back out. Now, I suppose I can then just go in and say, okay, I wanna fit that image here, do the same thing again, and now overall, you see the end result. I really love this image, it's the image that I used for the thumbnail of the video, but I really love the texture on this wave, and more importantly, it was unique because they were all rolling in, whereas this one had hit a rock and then had exploded back up. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Behind the Raw. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts, my edit and my workflow for this image. Be sure to join in next week when I continue my journey in Dingle and I go and I challenge myself. To, I do seem to like giving myself challenges, but I challenge myself to try and replicate an image that was taken by a good friend of mine when he visited Ireland last September, which was Michael Shane Bloom. And he got a phenomenal image and I was in the same spot. So I said, okay, why not? Let's give it a go. I knew it was going to be a challenge, but join me on Sunday to see how I get on. Thank you very much, as always, for watching the channel. If it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange voll.